Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be going back to our own planet and we're going to return to Greenland. Because that's right, NASA, as you can probably tell from the title, discovered yet another crater in the region where they discovered the first crater. But I actually wanted to talk a little bit more about this discovery because people based on the actual uh, title may jump into conclusions that are not actually true. So today we're going to talk science and I'm going to tell you exactly what NASA has discovered and what we know, but most importantly, what we still don't really know about the Greenland craters. Welcome to What The Math. So the Greenland crater, uh, the first crater at least, uh, now officially has a name, but uh, not really anything else. We still don't really know the actual dates. We will probably not know the actual uh, collision dates for a very long time. Uh, the name of the crater is actually right here. It's known as the Hawaii Hawaiathic crater. Um, and um, what we've discovered about it is that, well, we know for a fact that it's a crater now. And we do have certain signs to indicate that it's a relatively young crater, but anywhere from 12,000 to possibly two and a half million years old. But we still don't know and will not know the actual age, which is uh, where we need to stop kind of speculating about what this may have caused on the planet. Um, the reason we don't know the age is because we need to drill through all of this ice, which is about a kilometer of ice, to try to get a sample of the actual rock underneath. That's kind of hard. It's very hard. It's super challenging. But uh, the person responsible or partially responsible for the discovery of this crater, this wonderful person who, as you can see, has a Twitter account, Joe McGregor, he actually had a hunch and it was a very brilliant hunch. He thought that, well, listen, if we found one crater under the ice, could there be more? And he actually started looking at the data uh, produced by NASA and specifically by both the satellite images and also the images or the X-ray images produced by these NASA airplanes from the Operation Ice Bridge. They're uh, really, really complex um, radar planes, basically. They essentially uh, scan the area below and try to identify what lies underneath the ice. Here's actually one of the more beautiful pictures I was able to find from this mission that someone shot while flying in Greenland. Now. Joe's assumptions about having more craters in Greenland are definitely not far-fetched. If you look at the moon, for example, which is literally the reflection of Earth in a sense, the surface of the moon is covered in craters. It's crater central. If you were to actually count the craters, which someone did for um, their PhD actually, and I don't think that was the most fun PhD to do, but anyway, if you were to count at least size-wise, there are actually over 11,000 craters that are similar in size to the uh, crater we discovered in Greenland a few months ago, um, which was, I think, about 19 miles in diameter, which is approximately 30 kilometers or so. This new crater that Joe discovered pretty much single-handedly in a sense, um, well, actually, not really, but he did kind of play a huge role in it, uh, is a little bit larger. There it is. There is a second possible impact. And um, what we know about it so far is that, well, for one, it seems to be much older. As a matter of fact, one of the first sort of observations about this crater is that the ice above it is uh, approximately 79,000 years old. So this already puts the crater at that lowest age of at least 79,000 years old. As you can see, it's also the sec uh, 22nd largest crater on Earth. And uh, it's approximately 35 kilometers or 22 miles in diameter, so it's a little bit larger. And like I said, the moon has at least 11,000 uh, of similar craters. So on Earth, it's not unusual to find these. I am fairly certain if we look close enough underneath Antarctica and possibly other ice shelves, we're going to find a lot more. Now, even though it may not really look like a crater from this angle, um, upon further examinations, which has been done very thoroughly in the paper that you can find right here by uh, Joseph McGregor and the team, um, it basically does kind of tell you exactly why they believe this is a crater. And one of the sort of more obvious features here is the circular shape and the bowl formation that usually only sort of corresponds to a crater or potentially a volcanic eruption. So this could either be 
a crater or volcanic eruption, but volcanic eruptions usually are also associated with very positive magnetic anomalies and also um, normally in very specific areas around the planet. There are no nearby volcanoes. This is actually really, really far from any nearby volcanoes and there is no uh, magnetic activity here. As a matter of fact, uh, the area where this crater is located seems to have a negative um, gravitational anomaly, specifically right here. And this anomaly indicates that this is basically most likely um, an actual crater. All of the negative anomalies, negative gravitational anomalies, are usually associated with craters because they literally kind of squeeze the ground underneath and they kind of very slightly decrease the gravity. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, if you actually jump here, you're going to be jumping higher. It just means that if you were to measure this very, very accurately, there would be a very, 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 very tiny decimal point that would be kind of lower than everywhere else on Earth. So there's definitely a lot of signs pointing at this being a crater. Now, in terms of the age, going back to the age, at least 79,000, but the upper end, because of the amount of um, erosion that uh, very likely occurred over thousands and thousands of years, the upper end here is actually 100 million years. So this crater could be anywhere from 100,000 to 100 million years old, which is a huge range when you think about it. And we're not going to find out anytime soon because the actual ice here is two kilometers thick. It's even thicker than the first crater we discovered. We definitely know that there is a crater, but we don't really know how old it is. Now here is sort of the obvious question. Is this from the same sort of collision? Are these two craters related? And the answer to this is an almost obvious no for several reasons, one of them being the age difference. And the second being is that We've actually found these so-called pairings in other locations. There's actually at least one in Canada, there's at least one in Ukraine. So finding a pair of um, craters like this is not uncommon. It does seem kind of unusual, but a lot of things in life are like that. So it's obvious that these are two completely different collisions that occurred in the same region or similar region, but at a completely different time frame, possibly millions of years apart. And well, unfortunately, that's kind of all we know for now. You can definitely check out the paper that I mentioned, which is right here, and it's also in the description below. Or if you want to find out more from the source directly, uh, you could potentially maybe tweet to Joe directly. Although, if this video goes viral and everyone starts tweeting him, um, I think he's going to really hate me for that. Sorry. But you know, this is an awesome research and I really want you guys to succeed in what you're doing. So maybe you do need the attention. Anyway, so um, definitely really exciting research, absolutely amazing uh, work in terms of finding the actual asteroid and identifying the actual uh, location simply using uh, maps that we already had. And I'm sure in the future we're possibly going to find more uh, simply based on the idea that we now know what to look for. This is actually the second ever under the ice crater that was discovered on our planet. And because there's so much ice on our planet, at least for now, until the whole global warming kicks in and melts it, um, we might actually be looking at finding more even this year. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you'd like to know more about when we discover more cool things on our planet, click that subscribe button and make sure to come back tomorrow to watch another video that will teach you something you may have not known before. Also, potentially share this with someone who you think may want to learn more about space sciences or sciences of our own planet. And um, come back tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And thank you so much to all of you who have actually been supporting me on Patreon for months or even years. It really helps me a lot. And if you'd like to join the team, make sure to check out the Patreon. Um, it's actually going to be kind of renewed soon. I'm, I'm going to add a few more features that weren't there before and potentially change how I'm doing things as well. I'm also uh, working currently to produce some of the more sort of original but cool scientific looking t-shirts for people to actually uh, get as Patreon rewards. So yeah, that's coming really soon. And here's actually a preview of one of them uh, that was actually hand-drawn by someone that I'm going to introduce later on. But anyway, so thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. See you tomorrow, wonderful person.